example of uh, the stove starting up, okay? So this is a very solid, bold flame, beautiful. Welcome back everybody, I'm Scott with Off Grid Stoves and More. I'm here to talk with you about troubleshooting your stove and where to start. So many of you end up calling us up or emailing us, emailing is best, and asking where do I begin to look for a problem in my stove? Well, we're just going to have to do the what's called a process of elimination. And this is what we do when we get an old barn find in here uh, or something to that effect. And we just pretty much go down the list. The first thing that you want to uh, check for is, you know, it, it, it might seem like common sense to a lot of you, but uh, first and foremost, uh, if it is showing no power, you hit the on switch and it is just dead. First thing that you want to do, and again, don't laugh because I had customers actually do this, uh, the stove was unplugged, okay? The stove. Next, if the stove is plugged in, uh, you want to make sure that there's power to the outlet. And again, these might seem like stupid suggestions, but again, I have had all of these things uh, happen with customers that have called me up. Make sure that the breaker is, uh, isn't tripped and that the stove might have, the last time it ran, the stove might have malfunctioned and it could have tripped the uh, circuit breaker. Okay, the next thing that you're gonna wanna check uh, with having no power is uh, your slow blow fuse. It's a 3.15A uh, slow blow and it is located uh, for some of you on the back of your unit or it could be an insert like uh, this unit here and your fuse might be right down at the bottom here of your control panel where it says fuse. Okay, take those out and check them and just make sure that uh, you do have a good fuse in them. If by chance you go through those three things and you still have no power, the next thing unfortunately is, is we're gonna have to uh, have you send us your user board, your control board, and also send us your air sensor. Okay. Um, all three of these things can completely kill the stove. Another item that by chance you uh, might have a problem with is one of your... Uh, snap discs, either your low limit or your high limit. And there are many videos that I have on here in order to uh, inspect and test the low limit and high limit snap discs. Uh, so check those out. This video is, I'm trying to go down a really quick list as to bing, 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 as to what you're gonna wanna check, okay? We're done with no power. So again, if you check the, the home breaker, uh, the stove is plugged in, and your stove fuses, uh, the last thing that you might want to check is just get inside of the cabinetry where the components are at and look for loose wires. Uh, there is always a, a possibility that over the years, if you've owned it, you know, from opening and closing the door, lifting the hopper lid, dumping in the pellets, and yada, 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 Wires can potentially become loose, uh, especially if you have, say, a chimney sweep come out and he performs a service on the chimney and uh, you, you, you just never know. It's, these are all things that uh, we look for. The next thing that you're going to want to look for is uh, if your stove does have power and you're trying to troubleshoot noise. Okay, let's just say that uh, here's a clip of a stove uh, to where the convection fan was hitting a wire that happened to shift inside of the cabinetry and was hitting uh, the squirrel cage. The noise is always going to be coming from one of your mechanical devices. And what I mean is motors. The noise is either going to be coming from the auger motor, the auger shaft, the convection fan, 
or the combustion fan. That's pretty much it. Now, if your parts are starting to squeak or grind um, or, or throw any other, you know, words out there that uh, could be related to a noise, those are the potential problems. Now, once you determine where the noise is coming from, I would highly suggest if you have the ability, take the part out. Uh, convection fans are notorious for getting clogged up with uh, hair and debris and, and uh, the bearings have a tendency to dry up or, or disintegrate literally. They will just, you know, start squeaking and falling into pieces. Or if you have a rubber grommet, uh, which you do, one of your rubber grommets could be finally wearing out and your squirrel cage could be in there rattling. So take the kit, let's just say it's a convection fan that you're, you've located the noise. The go ahead and remove the convection the fan. This is just time. trying to go down a list of grab how to troubleshoot plate. a problem. Then you can email us and we can pretty much get right down to it to determine if you're going to need to order a new part or if we're going to be able to sell you a part in order to rebuild whatever the problem is. Um, you know, it's that easy. Let's just say that we're done with uh, noises. All of a sudden you're getting smells, okay? Smells coming from your stove. The number one smell that you do not want to mess around with is this, obviously the smell of burning rubber or burning plastic. What that means is, is a wire is shorting out or a component, electrical component is burning up and you're gonna want to shut the stove down uh, and locate whatever that problem is it's creating the smell um, and you can normally see it if it starts smelling to where you it, it draws your attention you're going to be able to to more than likely locate it now if by chance it's something that is uh, internal on a part no you might not be able to but if something is burning up or smelling i can tell you that part is going to be short-lived and it's going to be it's going to be burned out in a matter of time. Uh, that's the dangerous part is the smells. Okay, I would highly suggest that you do not run it any further after that. Now, we have had a customer as of late call us up and say, I got this weird smell. I just had my, my chimney swept. Okay, that could be potentially creosote. Now, creosote, if it is, if a chimney sweep comes in or if a homeowner sweeps the chimney down and does not thoroughly clean the stove, you can then have the smell of creosote brought into your house. Parts testing. Parts testing is a big uh, part of our business that we have uh, testing stations that we put your auger motors on, your, your motherboards, your user boards, your convection fans and we can check everything out for you. So what you would end up doing is you would ship us the product that you want us to test. And I have made a video here very recently in regards to shipping damage. We are finding that there is so much shipping damage going on right now that a customer of ours sent their motherboard, their user board into us and it got smashed. They did not insure the board. Now, shipping insurance is really inexpensive. It goes according to the size of the package and the value that you put on the product. So, I mean, you know, for a typical, uh, let's just say that you ship us your motherboard, your user board, and your air sensor, it's going to be somewhere around $10. Okay, I could be off a dollar or two, but there's a rough guesstimate. And it's well worth it. It's not always going to be your uh, safe haven, though, because we have had a shipping company, three letters, and I'm going to say it because I'm so frustrated that they literally ripped our customer a new one and said that they weren't going to replace their parts, UPS. This customer even sh added shipping insurance. They valued it, what the value of the products were, and UPS lost the box. And then they turned around and they said, well, you didn't put it in a proper shipping box. 
uh, and it wouldn't have been, well, you know what, UPS, let's go ahead. And so the customer, I told the customer, have UPS snap some photos of this box and, uh, uh, you know, show us what they're talking about. Well, unfortunately, UPS decided to, you know, it was like crickets, okay? They didn't want to because they lost the box. So they just flat out said, well, you're going to have to take whatever steps necessary, but we're not going to reimburse it. So beware of UPS. The parts testing, we will normally test your parts uh, for a small minimal fee. And if by chance a part is bad, we will deduct half of the ship, uh, half of the testing fee, excuse me, off of the part that you're purchasing. We're, you know, we're going to cut that test fee down in order to help save you some money and give you a new part so we can get you up and running quick. Parts that are floating around out there being sold by several entities that do not focus on Osterflom and Rika. You get what you pay for in parts. We try to only carry the upper end line of parts due to the fact that we have the best stove ever manufactured. Why do we want to put junk parts in it? to make it noisy, inefficient, uh, and the parts will be short-lived. Unfortunately, some manufacturers, since all of the chaos occurred back in 2020, disappeared on us, and we have begun to uh, manufacture parts ourselves because we plan on doing this for a long time. And these stoves, you know, I mean, it's 30-some years old, and this thing is like brand new. I got a customer that uh, we're shipping this one out to. And uh, this is going to be off the table here within the next couple of days. Um, but look at it this way. We just designed a new premium igniter. Our premium igniter is probably an upper end cost. But here's, here's what what happens when you buy a, a, a quality igniter or a cheap igniter. The number one problem with buying a cheap igniter is most of the time when they blow, they will surge back and they will take out your motherboard. That motherboard is very expensive. Some of you already know this. For those of you that don't, it's one of the most expensive parts on the stove and you do not want to be putting cheap parts in and blow that motherboard. Uh, ours, our premium igniter, has the best warranty in the industry. Three years. Okay, that's, that's what we put into manufacturing these. We spent a lot of money on uh, R&D and the materials are, are the ultimate. Okay, so be very careful. You can give us a call. You can ask us. You can price check us. And, you know, you can take the cheaper route and go with somebody else if they're just out there selling a conglomerate of parts. Um, but one thing that I will say to you is you will not have the customer support that we offer you in uh, assisting you if you have an issue taking the part out or putting the part back in or da 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 All righty. That right there, in a nutshell, is how you inspect your stove really quick now again i know that some of you are probably going to go man dude. okay so if you go down the list of no power noises smells uh and you cannot figure it out that's when you're going to want to email us at offgridstoves at gmail.com and we're going to get you up and running. Guaranteed. Very fast. Very, you know, it's, we know what we're doing. After 30 some years, I can tell you that uh, some nights, you know, I help so many of you out there that I lay in bed and I just dream about fixing Osterflom's. Isn't that scary? Nice. One last thing that I do want to say. Pellets. Pellets are becoming a major problem. If you have not seen the video on uh, pellet quality, please go watch that video. It is very important that you understand that not all pellets are created equal. Uh, pellets these days, due to individuals that don't want to work, the quality control issues, uh, the problem with getting 
wood resources uh, that they once had. A lot of quality pellet manufacturers at one time were considered good, high quality premium pellets, which they still keep on their bags, but what's inside the bag has changed. You could have uh, uh, more byproducts, dirt, bugs, uh, you know, uh, sticks and debris, creates pellet jams. Uh, they're making pellets now. There's a manufacturer or two out there that are making pellets that are up to three inches long. Those most of the time will create pellet jams at the auger shaft and it will literally stop your auger from dropping pellets consistently in your burn pot and you'll find that your stove is going out randomly. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, instead of calling us, but here's our number anyhow. For those of you that don't have a computer, I'm not sure how you're seeing this unless you have a smart TV that's got a YouTube app. 800-348-1021. Uh, Email goes right to our cell phone. If I'm up on a roof installing uh, or out here in the shop working, Julie's phone will go off, notify us, she will normally get right back to you. So give us a chance, we'll help you out. Gotta say one more thing. In the winter time, surges from storms, from trees hitting power lines uh, are blowing these uh, stoves, electronics on a regular basis. This is a very, very inexpensive uh, piece of insurance that uh, will save that, uh, you know, freestanding or insert from having any electronic damage from a surge. And we have these uh, ready to ship to you. You guys stay safe out there. Peace.